Let's consider the inheritance of haemophilia, which is sex-linked. But this could apply to any sex-linked condition. It could apply to blue-green colour blindness, for example. Now, why this occurs is, as you know, if you want to reproduce, you need XX, which is a female, and we need an XY, which is a male. But this arises because the X chromosome, if we just draw a diagram of the X chromosome, is relatively large, whereas the Y chromosome is a very small chromosome. So this means if we have a gene that is on that part of the X chromosome, that's fine, that will work. But can you see there's no homologous position on the Y chromosome, it's too small. Whereas if we're dealing with a female, and we have two X chromosomes, so that's X and Y, X and X, in the female there are two positions. So the female has two opportunities to have the gene present. And this is the locus, the position on the chromosome of the gene, for example, for producing factor eight. Factor eight <coughs> is an essential clotting factor for the blood. It's an essential part of the coagulation cascade. So without factor eight present, the blood cannot clot properly. Now the gene for normal clotting, in this case is dominant. The haemophilia gene is recessive. So this means all you need is one copy of the normal dominant gene not to have any coagulation disorder. Now this tends to arise when we have a female whose X chromosome is carrying one normal dominant gene, so we'll give that, a, that chromosome a capital H. But another X chromosome which is carrying the recessive haemophilia gene. So we can see that this woman is X big H, X small h. She's heterozygous for the haemophilia gene. This means she'll be phenotypically normal because she has one copy. She has one copy of the normal dominant gene. So that one will be an H, the normal dominant gene. That would be a haemophilia recessive gene in this case. And let's suppose she marries a normal man. Now he'll have an X big H because he's normal. This is what I've got. I've only got one gene for producing factor eight, but thankfully I don't have haemophilia because one gene is more than enough. But on the Y chromosome, there is no homologous position. So the Y chromosome is a zero. It's not carrying anything. So as we would expect, we produce gametes. And they will be the range of gametes that we could have. Now this one <clears throat> could combine with that one, giving us a girl with two big H's. So she's genotypically homozygous, phenotypically normal, because she has two copies, <coughs> two copies of the normal dominant gene, which is good. And the other advantage of this is she can't pass this on to the next generation because she doesn't have the abnormal haemophilia gene. Another possibility is that XH there combines with that Y0. And there we have a boy who does not suffer from haemophilia because he's got one copy of the normal dominant gene. This is what most men are, in fact, which is, which is good. Another possibility is that one with that one. Now that gives us an X and an X, so we've got a girl. That one's a small H and that one's a big H. Now, this girl is not going to suffer from haemophilia because she has one copy of the normal dominant gene. So phenotypically she'll be fine, 
but of course you could potentially pass that defective haemophilia gene on to the next generation. But the fourth possibility is that we could have an X from there and a Y from there. So here we have an X small h Y zero. And unfortunately, this boy does not have a copy of the normal dominant gene. Therefore, he cannot produce factor eight. Therefore, he will suffer from haemophilia. So very often in these sex-linked genetic characteristics, it's the women that carry it, but very often it's the boys that suffer from it because they have no second opportunity to carry a copy of the gene on their small Y chromosome.